Oregon State in white. Dan Godfrey will jump for Evansville facing Lamont McIntosh of the Beavers. Man to man Bob man to man by Oregon State they get the ball in low right away Evansville to the big fella Hafner's first shot of the contest is rebounded by Teo Alabigovic. Oregon State will normally bring the ball up slowly taking advantage of the point because Gary Payton is the best point guard in the country. With Knox also, they got two great guards and can control the game from the guard position. Payton guarded by the freshman Schreffler. Alabegovich fighting off Brian Hill, and he'll foul him. It's not uncustomarily to find when you have two teams that are young as a team to have a hard time getting started at the beginning of an NC2A, NCAA type game because they're a little nervous, they're all excited, they're probably halfway hyperventilated during the warm-ups, so consequently it takes them a little while to get started. And one of the real keys is which team gets their feet on the ground first, though? Their first bucket is a confidence builder, and here it comes. Good call, Will Brantley puts Oregon State on the scoreboard, the Beavers lead two to one. Pressing all over the floor, Schreffler, the freshman, gets the ball to Reed Crafton. That's Hill. Brian Hill ties the contest. Now he's to the competitor in Gary Payton. Evans still scores, so he brings it up a little quicker to try to put a little pressure on the other team. Might that take the Beavers out of their rhythm? Sometimes it can, sometimes it cannot. Again, right now, Oregon State needs a bucket because Evansville has also scored. From long range, Gary Payton delivers. And Oregon State leads 5-2. He's a 39% three-point shooter on that season. Hill in low. Nice pass from Crafton. Nice little bounce pass in a lot of traffic. Got it through the hill. Hill converted very easily. And he cuts Evansville's deficit to a single point. We're almost two minutes into the contest. Peyton behind an Alabegovich pick. Brantley for three. On the bank. I've been waiting to see somebody bank in a three-pointer this year. I would think that, you know, the shot's only 19-9. That's a good shot on the side. Go for the glass. You have better angle which to develop your shot from. I thought you had to call bank. That's only in horse games. Oh. That's Scott Hafner. Hafner's first bucket cuts Evansville deficit to 8-6. to six. Oregon State has the ball and the lead. Eric Knox. Alabegovich. Brantley misses. Hafner has the rebound, and Evansville wants to run. Reed Crafton began his career at the University of Florida. That's been good for it. Eric Knox brings it back for the Beavers. Down low to Alabegovich, rejected by Godfrey, picked up by Brian Hill. Godfrey led the MCC in black shots this year. That's Brian Hill. Typical passing game offense. Pass, go to the opposite side of the floor, set a pick for a teammate, get all five people involved in the offense. Crafton picked up by Peyton. So what you're saying, Bob, is this is a rule-oriented offense. There's a foul way outside. Hafner is fouled by Knox, his first, team's first. The passing game is a rule-oriented offense as we look at Jim Cruz, the MCC coach of the year, rather than a structured offense. There's the last foul. Here you can see Hafner, nice little ball fake, going baseline. Knox did not get all the way over, committed the foul. Play defense with your feet, do not you? That and a lot with your mouth, believe it or not. The more you can talk a guy into missing a shot, the better off you are. Crafton misses a three-point attempt, and Gary Payton throws down the rebound. The Beavers swing the ball effectively. McIntosh. Rebound, Godfrey. Ahead to Hill with Max to beat. 
that's his specialty. Brian Hill with the slam from Baltimore, Maryland. He has six of Evansville's eight points. Contest is tied for the second time. Neither of these teams seem particularly tied up. Gary Payton traveled before the set. One too many steps. He tried the old spin move in a lot of traffic. It got congested. Consequently, he stepped. Here you can see Peyton coming to the middle. His pivot foot's his left foot. See, right there. There was the extra step. There was the traveling call. First turnover against the Beavers. They led the Pac-10 in turnover margin, and that's a trademark for a Ralph Miller coach team. Godfrey. An air ball. Rebounded by McIntosh. The air ball does not make me a little bit unhesitant because, again, the guy's his first time out of the blocks in an NCAA tournament game. Look at Peyton take the baseline. Gary Payton has his first bucket. Jim Cruz looks on, 35 years old. Fourth year as the head coach at Evansville. His team trails 10 to 8. So they're setting into the passing game. Watch the pass. Cut. Nice. Brian Hill. That was a left hand to the side type dunk. Not your easy dunk. Definitely something for a dunk competition. The game has now been tied three times. Alabegovich to Payton. Great pass down low. After Brantley misses, he was fouled by Brian Hill. I wonder if that gentleman painted his face orange or has he been soaking in a little too much sun out here in the southwest. Will Brantley. Gets the ball to Gary Payton. He almost loses it to Schreffler. Trips over Schreffler and finds an open Brantley. Brantley in that bank. He likes that bank shot off the glass. He has two conventional field goals and a three-pointer. Seven in the ball game. This team is up by a bucket. Eric Knox takes the rebound. Payton for three. Second three-pointer for Gary Payton. He has eight in the ball game, and Oregon State has their biggest lead, 15 to 10. Two guards teaming up. Now watch Knox. Knox is putting the pressure all over Crafton. Hafner was guilty of traveling, and there's the tight defense we suggested Eric Knox might apply. First turnover against Evansville as Jim Cruz looks on. Knox has been guarding both. Crafting every once in a while, as well as carding Hafner. Now, Oregon State's bringing the ball up. You see Peyton looking over the floor. He finds Brantley in the basement. Alabegovich. This is a two-point attempt. And Will Brantley now has nine points in the contest. And Oregon State leads by seven as they press all over the floor. That's Brantley, a sophomore out of Seattle. There we go. Two, two things happened on that play. One was no Evansville player came to help out Brian Hill to have an outlet to pass the ball. Second of all, time was running down, so he's sitting there caught. As a teammate, you've got to go get the guy some help. Give him a place to shoot, pass the ball to. And Knox takes the inbounds pass from Payton and delivers his first field goal, extending Oregon State's lead to nine. A defensive lapse by Evansville, letting that backdoor play happen like that. Look at the pressure all over the floor. Oregon State's playing that tough Raph Miller type defense, man to man. Hafner for three. Rebound, Brantley. He's played well. Peyton guarded by Schreffler. Alabegovich. Down low to McIntosh, and he's bumped hard by Dan Godfrey. His first foul, third on the team. Alabegovich, even though he's the center, is ideally a three man. He likes it outside, spots his teammate down low. And there's the push by Godfrey, 53 of Evansville, pushing McIntosh in the back. Common foul, so Payton will put the ball in play on the baseline. And by three man, you're talking small forward. Small forward. McIntosh back outside to Knox. Payton being the point guard would be considered a one man. Knox the off guard to two spot. Great one on one move by Gary Payton. He has 10 points in the ball game, much to the delight of his teammates. Oregon State leads by 11. Chris Mack will be in the lineup for Evansville next time there's a dead ball. Scott Schreffler delivers a three-pointer. He led the MCC in three-point percentage this year, and he draws Evansville to within eight, 21 to 13. 
Now they're going to use Brantley, the three-man or the small forward, to bring the ball and initiate the offense. It comes back to him down low. He traveled. He did indeed. Second turnover against Oregon State. Watch Gary Payton go one-on-one -on -one here, Bob. You were talking about what a fine guard he is. Here's graphic proof. This is called taking it to the streets with the spin move. Watch, he's going to pin the man on his left, spin off of him, find the opening, and lay it in the hoop. Against full court pressure, Godfrey comes back to help out. This is Chris Mack, a freshman. And he gets the ball into the front court where the veteran Hafner handles it. It's Crafton. Mack out of Cincinnati. Hafner began his career at the University of Illinois. Crafton began his career at Florida. Godfrey uses the board. That's his first field goal. Evansville trails by six, 21-15, 11-18 to go in the half. Peyton taking over the game. At this point, Peyton has 10 points and three assists. Intercepted by Hafner with Peyton to beat. He did. Nice little move. Hafner shielded his body between the ball and Peyton. Consequently, Peyton had to back off and let him go in for the layup uncontested. So Evansville has shaved an 11-point deficit down to four with 10.45 to go in the half, and Gary Payton brings it right back and draws an offensive foul. That's a great defensive strategy. When you have a penetrator like a Payton, it's a given that he's going to steal the ball. 70-year-old Ralph Miller saw watch this Hafner steal another end. Right there, Hafner jumping into the passing lane, makes the steal. Now watch him put the ball in between his body, in between the ball and the defensive player. Back live, you see the turnover statistic. Oregon State rarely turns it over. Hafner stepped on the baseline. That's the third turnover against Evansville, and Oregon State will put the ball in play, leading by four with 10.35 to go in the half. Earl Martin is checked in for Oregon State. He's number 24. Peyton working on half. That's Knox. Nice shot under pressure. Eric Knox has his second field goal, and Oregon State extends their lead to 23 to 17. And we're about halfway through the first half. Both teams are shooting the ball very well. How come? I think that they've gotten over the beginning of the game jitters. They both know that they're in the tournament, and they both have realized now, if you don't win, season's over. That's right. Hafner, outside to Crafton. He's guarded by Knox. Hafner for three. Scott Hafner has seven points in the ball game. Evansville trails by three, 935. And counting to go in the first half. Funny, Scott Hafner is shooting the ball better today than he was in practice yesterday, don't you agree? He was very cold yesterday in practice, but sometimes uh, it takes a crowd and the real deal to get you going. McIntosh with a very effective turnaround. He extends Oregon State's lead to five. Lamont McIntosh out of Omaha. That's Chris Mack. Guarded by Knox. Uh, looks like some sort of matchup here, right? That's the one. Mack came in. Nice little move. Missed it. Rebound Hill. Nice fake. Hill misses, but he had his man way in the air. He did his job, though. He got the offensive rebound, a good pump fake to get the defensive player up in the air, and he's going to draw the foul. Here, Mack comes in, misses the shot. Here you see Hill with the rebound, pump fake. Draw the foul and then try to convert. At a minimum, you've got two free throws. Possibly make the basket plus one. Foul on Will Bradley, his first, third on the team. He suggested both these teams were shooting the ball very well. Hill now has nine points in the ball game. Only a 57% shooter on the regular season. Hafner takes a rest. I don't believe that both teams can keep up this pace. Evansville at 56% from the field right now. Oregon State at 69%. Xavier, representing the MCC, ousted from the tournament by Michigan in a close ball game. And, of course, the Wolverines without Bill Frieder, who's moved on to Arizona State. Rebound Godfrey. Godfrey. 
Evansville wearing the purple, trailing Oregon State by a score of 25 to 22 with 8.25 to go in the first half. That's Dan Godfrey guilty of traveling as Teo Alabegovich checked him along with Bob Elliott on Pete Solomon. Godfrey forgot which pivot foot he had. He tried to use the left, then he tried to use the right. So far in this game, both teams started out a little cold, and they've been hot ever since, both shooting over 50% from the field. Oregon State has the ball and a three-point lead. They led by as many as 11 earlier in the first half. The game has been tied three times. That's Gary Payton. Alabegovic over the outstretched Godfrey throws up an air ball, but Earl Martin is there. Martin has his first bucket, and Oregon State's lead is five. Brian Hill to Godfrey. Hill belted as he misses the shot. Martin got him from behind. Hill has been very active on the offensive glass today. Again, he goes and gets the rebound. Here you can see Godfrey kind of fumbling with the ball. Ball goes up. Watch Hill. They say, okay, I'll take it. Draws the foul with the body. Now he's going to the line to shoot two. The foul on Martin is his first fourth on the Oregon State team. That's Scott Hafner back in the lineup for Evansville, replacing Chris Mack. Brian Hill is three for three from the line, and he has 11 points in the contest. He was averaging 7.3 going into the game, so he's really rising to the occasion. Sometimes you never know when the cream is going to come to the top. Andre Patillo sounded his whistle under the basket. Whistle. Somebody said there was a, what of the officials said there was a whistle in the band that was distracting the players, the Oregon State band. And so the public address announcer, Dana Cooper, asked them to desist. And Oregon State, leading by three, has the ball. That's Eric Knox, started by Reed Crafton. Just picked by Martin. Evansville playing a tough man-to-man -man defense. And calls the turnover. Say that Scott Schreffler forces the turnover. Fifth against Oregon State. Jim Cruz looks on as Schreffler handles the ball. Oregon State has consistently played the whole game defensively with pressure on the guards as they bring the ball up. They're trying to wear down Evansville's guards. And Evansville back in a three-guard alignment with Trafton, who has the ball now. Hafner and Schreffler. That's Godfrey. He has a nice shooting touch, two field goals in this game, and he's closed the gap to a single point. Just over seven minutes to go in the half. Deflected by Hafner. That's Earl Martin. Martin's come off the bench to spark the Beavers. That's his second field goal, and Oregon State is back up by three, and they'll show full court pressure again, Bob. Just enough pressure to try to keep them thinking, where is my defensive man at? Not necessarily going for the steal, just to keep the pressure to wear somebody down so that by the second half, that fatigue will set in and you have a different ball game. Down low to Godfrey. He scores and he's fouled. And he also Godfrey, his third field goal, and he can tie the contest with a successful free throw. Teo Alabegovich committed the foul. He also sprained his ankle when he came down on the floor. Out of bounds, Blue. He's trying to lace it up a little tighter. That's an old trick. You, you think mentally that if you tighten it up, it won't hurt as much. Here, watch Telebegovic come down on his foot. You can see Godfrey going down there. The bucket's good. He's going to still shoot one. Now they're going to put the ball in play at the baseline here, Bob. Well, that was because the official ended up calling it after the shot was. Therefore, that's why the ball was taken out of bounds. So Evansville has a chance now to pick up two more points instead of just one off the free throw. And the lead as Hill drives the baseline. Godfrey tips it in, and Evansville is on top for the first time. Oregon State comes right back. And they take the lead, 31-30. Back into the passing game. Typical Evansville type offense. Passing game. Pass. Cut. Instead of pick for a teammate. Get all five people involved in offense. Down low. Hill puts it up and is fouled. Brian Hill very effective on the baseline for the Purple Aces. Don't you agree? Yes, I do. The little point guard, Reed Crafton, spotted the fact that nobody was guarding 42. Brian Hill down low. Throws him the lob. Hill has a great pair of legs, can get up in the air, draws the foul against Talavegovic. His second, team sixth. 
And so Brian Hill is back on the free throw line where he's four for four. He has 12 points. Oh. He's had, this is his 11th double figure game of the season. One of those players out of the Dunbar High School program in Baltimore, he played for Bob Wade, the current University of Maryland coach. He missed a pair. And Earl Martin was there to command the rebound. Will Bradley operating outside. And Peyton. Martin. Eric Knox picks the ball up off the floor, but he can't find the hole. Knox, with a good aggressive play inside, has his third field goal, and Oregon State leads by a three. That time, Scheffler, the point guard, number 20, brought the ball up, got the pressure, released, and now started the offense. For a freshman, he, that's a move you usually learn as a sophomore or a junior. You let get up into the defense, let the pressure release, then start your offense. Bobby, he's grown up a lot this year. <laughs> is, this, is this game being played at Evansville's pace or Oregon State's pace at this point in the first half? Actually, uh, neither, because both these teams usually do not score but so many points. And right now, at this pace, they're going to be up there. Schreffler for three. Scott Schreffler has his second long-range field goal, six points in the ball game, and he ties the game for the fourth time. It's 33 each. And the pace may increase because they're basically hyper. They're in the NCAA tournament, and, and they're really not sure. They just want to play. They're just so happy to be here. Brian Hill fouls Gary Payton. That's his third. That could be significant. Oregon State perfect from three-point range. During the season, Oregon State 38% from three-point land, and uh, the Purple Aces 44% under the direction of Jim Cruz, their fourth-year head coach. The Beavers have the ball, and a great inbounds pass to a wide open. Will Bradley unties the game. Oregon State now leads 35-33. Oregon State was a little too aggressive on defense that time. Earl Martin, number 24, reaching in. Talk about two teams lighting it up. Look at this. Evansville 62%, Oregon State 63%. And guess why the score is 35 to 33. Oregon State is now over the limit. And so Scott Hafner goes to the free throw line. The MCC Player of the Year. First team academic All-America. He's actually pursuing an MBA. He's in graduate school. You know what that's all about. I know what it's about. Went that route and finished it up about five, six years ago. The game is tied at 35 apiece. That's the fifth time the contest has been tied, and we have just over four minutes to go in the half. Eric Knox, guilty of traveling as he was coming off the pick. Turnover number six for Oregon State, and that's unusual for a Ralph Miller coach team. Coach is not happy about that. Knox is trying to get his feet together. Forgot to put the ball on the floor at first. Here's the pressure again. Oregon State trying to wear down those Evansville guards. Part of the reason why Jim Cruz went to the three-guard lineup was so that he could get more help for bringing the ball up the floor. That's why Hafter is playing a lot of small forward today instead of big guard. And I think you'll agree it's been an effective move. This is only Crafton's first start in the last 10 games. At this point, I'd say he's somewhat happy because it's a tie game. If they were ahead, he would think he'd be a little more happy. If they were behind, he'd be unhappy. There right? you go. Binary operation. <laughs> Reed Crafton working on Gary Payton. Five on the shot clock. Oh, nice pass. Schreffler for three. And a rebound foul. Olaf Blop in the ball game, and I think he was the guilty party. It would be his first and just the fifth on the Evansville ball club. Jim Crew just pulled Blob aside and said, listen, you are over seven feet tall. You do not have to push somebody to get a rebound. Use your height, go up and get the ball, and bring it home for the Purple Aces. Eric Knox has the ball for the Beavers. Ball game is tied at 35 each. Crafton wants to run. And Peyton tackles it. He's an aggressive player, but a little bit too aggressive here. He draws his second foul, and the Beavers already over the limit. We'll see it again here. Watch Gary go for the steal here, number 20. As he sees Crafton start to lose the ball, and Gary got ball, left leg, right leg, sock, everything. Gary Payton, one of the premier guards in the country. 
Watching Reed Crafton head for the free throw line. He made the MCC all newcomer team. As we told you, he's a transfer from Florida. And he earns the bonus. Evansville leads 36 35, 305 to go in the half. One more for Crafton, who led the league in both steals and uh, was number two in assists, actually. And he hits them both. That's Evansville's biggest lead. Gary Payton. Nice spin dribble. Going into the middle, shot the little 10 footer over everybody, big guys included. Payton has a dozen. The game is tied for the sixth time. Evansville will keep it. That's a smart move by Crafton. He wasn't quite sure what the official was going to call. Therefore, just let the ball go out of bounds. Let the last call be the call. Schreffler working on Max. Hafner guarded by Payton. Hafner. Rebound McIntosh ahead to Payton. That's Knox. And as Knox goes high to get the offensive rebound, Andre Patillo calls the foul. The sixth team foul on the Evansville Ball Club and the first on Chris Mack. Here's the fast break. Payton in the middle. Knows Knox is on his left. Gives him a nice little bounce pass. And Eric knows he should have finished this one off. That's why he's upset. He should have finished it off and got the two. So after the common foul, Oregon State has put the ball in play. Just over two minutes to play in the half. Peyton off balance delivers again. He has 14. The Beavers are back on top. Chris Mack takes the long pass. Tough catch. Uh, Olaf Block. Mack was thinking about it, wasn't he? And Crafton tries one from three-point range, misses, and the Beavers are on the run. Gary Payton to McIntyre. The basket does not count. The whistle preceded that follow as Earl Martin tumbled to the floor. Ralph Miller looks on, and we'll see this one again. This is how you run the fast break, but they didn't finish it off. Three passes. There's where it should have ended up. He missed it, and you see Martin flying in, and Crafton's like, hey, I was just standing here. So on the player control foul on Martin, his third, Crafton goes back to the free throw line where he's two for two, his only two points of the ball game. Good look at Earl Martin. Martin sporting that bowl with the tail. <laughs> Cut last by Blop, so Oregon State will put the ball in play and Tail Alabegovich returns to the lineup. There's Alabegovich. Viana, Yugoslavia. He is a freshman, but he's a 22-year-old freshman, so he's a little bit more mature. Yes, uh, he's got a few years on a few people out there. And a little international competition as well. Peyton for a three-point attempt. McIntosh went high for the rebound, and Olaf Block fouled him. I think it might have been, been on Chris 34, Mack. Chris right. Mack. Second on Mack. McIntosh had the inside position. At that point, Mack tried to Bogart him, muscle him out of the way, and got Bogart called. Him, Bogart. That's, that's a basketball that's, term. That's a basketball term there. Bogart is synonymous with muscle him out. Lamont McIntosh goes to the free throw line, his figures for the 1989 season. In a one and one situation, he comes up short, and Scott Schreffler, the freshman, corrals the rebound. A conventional field goal would tie the game. Crafton guarded by Payton. Mack wide open for a three point attempt. The rebound comes down to Will Bradley. This is Payton with the ball. Eric Max. Payton really sees the floor. Fine pass down a lot of Bradley, but he couldn't finish it off. And Evansville comes back the other way with a chance to tie with a conventional field goal again. Bob had the good offside help with the block. Now Evansville's trying to set it up. Run the motion. There's your shot. This is a two-point attempt, but it doesn't fall. And Peyton has the rebound. He's an excellent rebounder for a guard, isn't he? Yes, he does it all on the floor. Now he looks up, notices that the shot clock says 31 seconds. At that point, you notice you're going to have the last possession of the game for the half. 
Eric Knox handles the ball for the Oregon State Beavers with 18 seconds and counting down to go in the half and the Beavers leading Evansville by two. At McHale Center in Tucson, Arizona. Peyton a miss, rebound Schreffler. To Reed Crafton. And the Aces will play for the last shot. Crafton pumps it up, rebound Alabegovich at the horn. Evansville and Oregon State going at it in this first round West Regional encounter in Tucson and the Beavers put the ball in play to get the second half underway. That's Will Brantley and he has his pass tipped out of bounds by Crafton and to reset the people on the floor it's Eric Knox will put the ball in play for the Beavers along with Brantley, Gary Payton, Teo Alabegovich and uh, Lamont McIntosh. That's Oregon State's five and Evansville counters with Dan Gottfried, Reed Crafton. Intercepted by Brian Hill. He tips it out of bounds, and Oregon State will get it back. Scott Schreffler is in the backcourt for Evansville, along with Scott Hafner. Both teams starting the same lineups that start at the beginning of the game for the second half. Coming out man-to-man, -man, pressure all over. Evansville's trying to put that pressure on Oregon State guards, maybe turning it around a little bit. In the first half, it's like the Oregon State guards are putting more defensive pressure on. Alabegovich pulls it back out. And Crafton steps in, steals the ball from Payton, gets it ahead to Schreffler, to Hafner. <laughs> Hafner only took six shots in the first half. That, does, that cannot have Jim Cruz happy when his guy that's averaging 24 and a half points per game only gets the ball up six times and a half. Yet he's tied with Oregon State. Oh. Rebound fought for. Brian Hill had great position and drew a foul from Teo Alabegovich. Let's take a look at the first half stats. What jumps out and catches your eye, Bob? Well, I think rebounds without a doubt. Here you got a 20 to 10 difference. Although, now you look at the stats, you say Evansville only shot 48% to 55. They took a lot more free throws, however. But again, when you get out rebounded by twice and shoot the ball less, you would think you would not be in the game. Yet Evansville is in this game. Evansville facing full court pressure. That's Scott Hafner. We're a minute into the second half, and the game has just been tied for the seventh time. Hafner for three. He has 12. That's his second three-pointer of the ball game. And Evansville now has their biggest lead. Do you sense a shift in momentum here, Bob? I sense a shift that the ball is going to go to Scott Hafner a lot in the second <laughs> half. Gary Payton. Oregon State came up with a loose ball. This is Martin. That was a big bucket because Oregon State's offense was not fluid the last two times down the floor. Even though it might not have been fluid, at least they got the bucket out of it. If it is the ball across that half court line. Evansville has the lead and the ball. The Purple Aces lead 42 to 41. We're two minutes into the second half. Schreffler. Hafner. He has room to shoot. Knox takes the rebound off the floor. The Oregon State guards are excellent rebounders. We talked about Peyton in the first half, and Eric Knox effective there, too. Peyton. Nice pass to McIntosh. That's what makes him a great player. He can score himself off the dribble, or he can set up a teammate for a basket. Either way, it's still a, a deuce in the, on the scorebook for Oregon State. And the Beavers back in the lead. Two and a half minutes into the second half now. Here's Hafner. Godfrey has the rebound slapped away and taken away by Eric Knox ahead to Payton. Shreffler did a good job of cutting him off, didn't he? That's what you got to do, but there's a the shot, and that was a serious break. <laughs> that was construction job all the way. Reed Crafton doesn't have numbers, but he does find Scott Shreffler to craft it. Rebound Hill. Brian Hill has 14 in the ball game, and Evansville is back on top by a point. 70-year-old Ralph Miller knows that the first loss in the tournament is his final game as a head coach. Evansville came out in the second half much more aggressive. McIntosh. Nice little jump hook. Do you get the impression in the Evansville locker room at halftime? Jim Cruz emphasized the fact that, hey, we can play with these guys. We can play with anybody. I tell you what, I'm glad I wasn't in there because I know there was uh, a few things flying around. Crafton, that's a three-pointer. 
Evansville is also not looking to hold the ball very long on offense. They're shooting it up pretty quickly. Going for a lot of threes also. And they're back on top by two. That's Peyton. He does that as well as anybody in the country. He's a point guard, but he'll end up 10 feet from the basket, shoot the little nice soft shot, put it in. Nice pass. Peyton has 16. Brian Hill gets it back on the other end for the Aces. And he has two buckets in the second half. Brian Hill. Evansville has a lead again. Wide open is Bradley. Martin went high for the rebound, couldn't tip it in. Godfrey growled it, and here's Reed Crafton bringing the ball the other way for Evansville, trying to build on a two-point lead. Let's see if, again, if, if Evansville only goes to about three passes and then a shot, because they're actually trying to force the tempo again to a quicker type game. One pass and a shot, an offensive rebound by Hill, a bucket, and a foul. Brian Hill, very effective inside. Streffler, the freshman, going to the hoop, misses it. But there's Hill, as he's been all day long, active on the offensive glass. Let's see from a different angle. You see the miss by Schreffler. There's Hill right there. Johnny on the spot. See the foul and the bucket. They went through the ritual of the high fives. So everybody got a little taste of it. And now he converts it for a three-point play. Foul was on Knox, his second. Much to the delight of the Evansville fans. Brian Hill has tied his career high. He has 19 points. And Godfrey went up for the rebound. And Andre Patillo calls the foul. Excellent call. Hafner, having the bigger man, McIntosh, tried to really put the body on the guy and ride him out of bounds. You hear him talk about boxing out. Well, he boxed out a little too much, took the guy in the row one. There was the foul. His first first right foul. Anybody no foul. in the Evansville ball right club ball. in the second half. And an inadvertent horn stopped play, so Oregon State will put the ball in play once again with Gary Payton, the trigger man. That's the old inadvertent horn <laughs> trick. That's official Rick Hartzell from Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Knox is guarded by Kraft, and he has a couple of inches on him. Payton takes it inside. He misses, but he was wearing Dan Godfrey. Gary Payton is one of the most fiercest competitors in America. You can see where all of a sudden the game's starting to turn over for Evansville. Payton said, hey, give me the ball. I'm going to take control of this one today. Foul was on Hill, not Gottfried, and that's Brian Hill's fourth foul, so he's going to have to sit down. Chris Bamba comes into the lineup for Evansville, and Hill heads for the sideline. As we said a moment ago, he's tied his career high with 19 points. Those four personal fouls came because Brian Hill has been extremely active today. He's made some things happen that were good. Unfortunately, at the same time with his being so active, he's also committed a few fouls. And Gary Payton has just scored his 17th point of the ball game. Gone Oregon State to within four and now three. Peter had the pleasure of playing against Coach Miller twice when he was coaching. But I can say that out of that 600 and something wins, he didn't get one of them against Arizona when I was playing. Interesting because I was about to say I'll bet it's no fun to play against a Ralph Miller coach team. It, it wasn't. You knew you had 40 minutes of a hard game to play. Evansville leading by three. That's Bamba. Schreffler. Reed Crafton cut off by Peyton and Peyton fouled him. Gary Payton commits his third foul. That could become significant. And the third on the Oregon State team here in the second half. Ralph Miller, eight 20 win seasons. This was his eighth as Oregon State went 22 and seven. And they surprised some people with their success this year, 13 and five in the Pac-10. Evansville with the ball. They won the MCC regular season title. That's Hafner, he was a big reason why. Rebound McIntosh. We're almost six minutes into the second half. Oregon State has the ball. They trail by three. McIntosh, good muscle inside. Big, strong move. Took two dribbles, back Gottfried in, spun on him, and put it off the glass. Six of his eight points have come here in the second half, and he's closed the gap to a single point for Oregon State. Go, 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 go. 
got free. He has 10, his first bucket of the second half, and Evansville is back up by a three. Peyton fouled by Schreffler. And foul on Scott Schreffler, only his first, and only the third on the Evansville ball club. Scott Schreffler, a 6-1 freshman out of Stoneford, Illinois, and on the MCC All-Newcomer team. Peyton knows he has a Mitch match. The guy is a little bit shorter. He's younger. Peyton said, I'll take him to the basket. And he winds up on the free throw line where he's two for two so far today. One shot, everybody. Lock down. Gary Peyton, 41 points against Washington State this year. Number three in Pac-10 scoring during the season, but number one among nine seniors. Evansville leads by a point. Peyton with 20 now, just over his average of 19.7 points per game. Schreffler is guarded by Knox. Crafton picked up by Peyton. Evansville in no hurry here, Bob. No, the, and it's kind of ironic because they started the second half out so well with the quick shot. Now they've gone to a slower tight pattern game, back to their old passing game, looking for more options. But they found the good shot. Godfrey scores to give Evansville a three-point advantage. And Godfrey has 12. Nice pass to McIntosh. Blocked by Godfrey, the MCC League block leader this year. That's Brantley. He has 13. And Evansville's lead is only a single point. Again, the full court pressure. Trying to wear down Evansville's guards. They break the press pretty easily. Bamba doesn't like to shoot the bomb. And a foul on the part of Eric Knox, his third. And so now, Alabegovich has three, Knox has three, Peyton has three, and Martin has three. A common foul, fourth on the Oregon State team in the second half. Those fouls are piling up on the Beavers. Aggressive play by McIntosh, and he forced the turnover, number five. Lamont McIntosh lost two teeth in the Washington game this year. Oregon State trying to regain the lead in the first half. The Beavers led by as many as 11. Tough catch for McIntyre. Nice Brantley. kick out. Rebound Bamba. That's happening. Chris Bamba's dad is here. His father is the team physician for the Indiana University basketball team. And they'll play later in the same region against George Mason. Hafner, down low to Bamba. Nice pass. Hafner showed that he can score and also see the floor and hit it to a teammate. So Evansville back up by three. Peyton a miss. Bamba a rebound. He's made his presence felt since entering the lineup. Tipped away, and Evansville will keep it with 11-13 to go in regulation. And the ace is leading by three. Here's the old master himself, co-coach of the year in the Pac-10 this year. Along with the coach of your alma mater, Lou Olson. Gottfried has the ball slapped, and apparently he was slapped as well. Dan Gottfried will go to the line after drawing a foul. One thing Gottfried did there, when he went to the basket and not went for the low block, he continued with his arm motion to shoot the ball, so the county helped the official make the call. By continuing on, like, yes, I am in motion to shoot. Give me two shots, please. And that call was the fourth foul on Eric Knox. Godfrey comes up short. First team all MCC this year. He had a big game against Loyola of Chicago. 43 points on 20 of 23 shooting on the floor. And he hits one of two here. Evansville now up by a four. That's Earl Martin. Peyton to Brantley. Martin went high for the rebound. 
Are you surprised Knox is still on the floor with four fouls? No, because Eric Knox is vital. He's a fifth-year senior. He knows that he has four. He knows he cannot commit another one. He got stuck up in the air, then found Bradley. Hafner couldn't control the rebound, and McIntosh puts it in. McIntosh has 10 points, eight in the second half, and Evansville lead is only two. Evansville has led by as many as five here in the second half. Oregon State led by 11 in the first half. Hafner over McIntosh for three. His third three-pointer of the contest. When Hafner can get his hands on the ball on the first two or three possessions on the passes, he seems to get a shot off. If it goes to a fourth or fifth option, he doesn't seem to be able to get a shot off. You have a theory on why? Maybe because the, the game is starting to wind down. A defensive player then at that point has a hold of you. You're not controlling the defensive player. Mm -hmm. Peyton right down the lane with an aggressive move, but the ball won't fall for him, and McIntosh is there to grab the offensive rebound, score, and cut Evansville's lead to three. <laughs> Scott Schreffler. Picked away by Martin, ahead to Peyton. Evansville back on defense effectively, and Peyton splits a pair of defenders to score. That's why he's one of the country's great guards, isn't it? It was three on two. That was Gary Peyton as one of those three <laughs> on two. That's like five on two. The Oregon State fans rise as one to cheer the Beavers' defense. They've closed to within a single point. Evansville showing some patience, and Treffler throws it away into the backcourt. That's a freshman mistake. When Treffler first had the ball, he had the shot, he didn't take it, made a bad pass. Oregon State has closed within one. Here's how, Bob Elliott. Shreffler trying to make that pass. Martin blocks it. He's going to pass it to Payton. He's got a three on two. And he just splits the defense and goes right in all the way. Gary Payton, for the last six minutes of this game, has basically taken it upon himself to keep Oregon State in here. Eric Knox delivers a three-pointer, his first of the game, his ninth point of the game. And Oregon State has regained the lead. And now they press all over the floor. Oregon State has out-rebounded only five opponents all season long, but they have a 13-rebound edge over Evansville at this point in the game, Bob. Schreffler. So that's the shot he should have shot on the last possession. So that's, that tells you the coach got to him and said, listen, you have the shot, will you please shoot the ball, son? Hafner goes high for the rebound. His team, the Aces, leading by a point. 8.15 to go in regulation. Gottfried on the baseline, tipped away from behind, and that probably saved the bucket. That definitely saved the bucket. The old behind the back, reach around move, which sometimes ends up being the Matador. Brian Hill checks back in the ball game for Evansville. He's shackled with four fouls. He also has 19 points. And heading for the sideline, Chris Bamba, who played very well in limited action, don't you agree? Bamba gave Evansville some great minutes. Now, will Hill be able to turn it back on the way he was when he left? Tough to get back in your rhythm, isn't it? Unless you get the ball and make your first basket, that gets you into your rhythm real quickly. That's Godfrey. Dan Godfrey. He has 15 points in the ball game, seven here in the second half, and Evansville is up by a three. And we have a timeout called by Oregon State. So far, we know that Knox has four for Oregon State, and you see three guys, Peyton, Alabegovich, and Martin with three each. Hill for Evansville with four. Knox is going to have to show what he's learned for the last five years in the Oregon State program. He's a fifth-year senior. He's got to stay out there, shoot the ball when he needs a shot, rebound it when he needs a rebound, and score when he needs a score. McIntosh, guilty of traveling. So the Beavers turn the ball over for the eighth time, and Evansville has a chance to build on their three-point lead. Both teams shooting well in the second half, particularly Evansville, don't you agree? Evansville in the second half, he's looking 12 for 17 from the field, 71%. A lot of that's because the ball's been in half in his hands, and half can fill it up. He's got in his hands right now. He's guarded by Bradley. Crafting. Guarded by Pete. Don't hold him, please. Don't hold him. Ruffler drove on Knox and delivered a hoop that gives Evansville a five-point lead. That ties their biggest margin of the game. Ruffler has 11. There's Peyton. 
Knox with another offensive rebound, and as he goes up, a foul called by Rick Hartzell, Reed Crafton. Felt like he had good position, but the official did not agree. What do you think, Tom? I, do, I agree with the officials this time. Watch the shot by Peyton. It comes off. There you can see the little body bump right there. And that's where the foul was called. It was, all, it was really before the shot. First on, on the Crafton, fourth on the team. You never agreed with the officials when you played. It's amazing how things change when you get behind a microphone. Intercepted by Crafton as Brantley was trying to avoid the backcourt violation. You see a lot of teams trying the three-pointer on transition, and Godfrey puts up the offensive rebound. He has 17, and Evansville has their largest lead, a seven-point margin. How much trouble has Oregon State in? Peyton fouled outside by Shreffler. Peyton got away with one that time because he actually hooked Treffler with his left arm to make that move to the basket. Jim Cruz looks on. Let's go back to the original question, though. Is Oregon State in some trouble, or is there enough time left for them to reseize the momentum? With 6.20 left in the game, a seven-point margin, with a three-point shot, especially since Peyton and Knox can both shoot the three very well, no, Oregon State is not in trouble at this time. Evansville's done a great job to seize the momentum, haven't they? They've, they've gone back to that faster tempo. That seems to be the way that they've done better against Oregon State today. Nice pick and roll. McIntosh tries his jumper, misses everything, and Godfrey is fouled by Gary Payton. I think he was clipped. The other MCC representative, Xavier, falls victim to Michigan under interim coach Steve Fisher. Evansville puts the ball in play. Hill, nice pass tipped away, recovered by Crafton. During that last timeout, Oregon State made one substitution, brought Knox out of the game. Remember, Knox and Peyton both have four fouls each, so it's like they're going to go with one of them in the game at a time. Godfrey comes up short. Martin pulls away the rebound. That's Brantley. Five and a half minutes to go in regulation. Alabegovich over Godfrey. Rebound, fought for. Recovered by Evansville Scott Halfman. And there's an injured player, Bradley, writhing in pain as he collided with Hill. With Hill. Here's the shot by Alabegovich. It's going to come off. Peyton's going to fight for the rebound with Hill. Watch the ball skirt off to the side. Hill's going to dive for it. Bradley's going to dive for it. And they both go right into the sidelines. Hill is okay, so he heads for the Evansville bench, and now the concern on the part of trainer Sandy Sandago of Oregon State is for the Beavers' outstanding player, Will Bradley, who's been so effective in this ball game with 13 points, and he heads to the sideline for some repairs. That almost reminds me of a hockey match when the puck goes into the, into the boards, and these guys go flying in there, and that's just what they did, except for this is basketball, not hockey. Ralph Miller, the seventh man to coach 1,000 games or more, looks on as Evansville is about to put the ball in play. That's Hafner. He finds Schreffler. And Evansville is able to beat the press. They're a very well drilled team, aren't they? Yes. Jim Cruz has done an excellent job with them. And at this point, it looks like he's going to stick around and dance one more time. That's Hafner. Crafton. Reed Crafton. Evansville has their biggest lead. Nine points. Bob Cavill. Alavegovic knocks. Cavill once again. Alavegovic fouled as he rolls to the hoop. Godfrey went right up there with him. Good strong move, but if Alabegovich had a right hand, he could have shot that without any discrepancy. So Ralph Miller, in his 38th year as a head college basketball coach, 19th at Oregon State, watches Teo Alabegovich head for the free throw line. Well, he's a 75% shooter on the season. He made his 27th start today, Bob, and in 15 games he's been in double figures, but that's his first point. Of this is there. And his second. Yeah. 
Will Bradley is okay after that collision, and he reports back in for Bob Campbell for the Beavers. He's holding that left elbow a little bit. You saw him shrugging it. No time to shrug it now. You got 4.30 left to do something quickly to get back to this game. Crafton kicked it, recovered it. Now he's wearing Gary Payton, so he gets it to happen. Godfrey fouled by Alabegovic. His fourth. Now the Beavers have a trio with four fouls apiece. Godfrey will head for the free throw line. He's one for two so far today. He's been coming a little short on his free throws. Let's see if he tries to get a little more leg motion to get a little more distance on his shot. That, one, the was, that one was a little short, but it it was short, but it got the roll. Because he had good rotation, the Oregon State bench reflects their concern. The numbers on Dan got He hits a pair. And the Aces are back up by nine, tying their biggest mark. Brantley. Knox rejected by Gottfried, but he had to foul to do it. Second foul on Gottfried. See the shot by Brentley on the side. Watch Knox sneak in a rebound here. And there's the foul right there on the left forearm. Three fouls on Godfrey. It is Knox. The first to two. Fifth year senior Eric Knox. Hits two under pressure. Seven, just over four minutes to go in regulation. And Evansville breaks the press again. Intercepted by Peyton. Gary Payton. Gary Payton at his best with a pass to Brantley on the wing. It's down to five. Let's see what the full court pressure does this time. The Aces have the lead and the ball. And about three and a half minutes to go in the contest. That's Hafner. First team academic All America Scott Hafner, the player of the year in the MCC. Under pressure, and he calls time to avoid a five second call. A very intelligent play. They've been filling it up. They are now at 57% from the field. 57% from the field for Evansville. At halftime, they're at 48. So that tells you right there, they're in the middle of the high 60s for this half. Sixth in the country in field goal percentage at 53%. That's tops in the MCC. Hafner. As we talked about at the top of the show, passing game, set the screen, Hafner comes off the screen, lets it fly, two in the bottom of the net. And that one might have been a three. It was indeed. Gary Payton gets it right back for Oregon State. And the Beavers press all over the floor again, trailing by six. Reed Trafton breaks the press. Pulls it back out. See if the Aces run some clock. Brian Hills played very well. He shackled with four fouls, however. Reed Crafton. Next time there's a dead ball, Alan Celestine will make his first appearance in the Beaver lineup. Evansville leading by six. Nine on the shot clock. Hafner misses. Oh, Martin has a rebound for Oregon State. You know, Oregon State, two minutes left. They've got to get the ball up and get a shot up. They need points. And they got a pair from Peyton, and he'll go to the free throw line as well. In crunch time, the good players are at their best. Gary Peyton is one of the fiercest competitors around. Look at him. He's saying, I'm taking this all the way to the hoop. And Dan Gottfried, I don't care if you are 6'9", this is on you too. He's going to start from the outside, come all the way around the left baseline, and do a reverse shot on a six foot nine center who led his conference in shot blocking. Godfrey now tagged with his fourth personal. Peyton completes the three point play. He's now five for five from the line. And Oregon State only trails by three as Evansville tries to be careful handling the ball. And Scott Hafner has it at the moment. Evansville is trying to run a slow down game. Remember, when they were slowing it down early in the game, that's when they did not convert the baskets. 
when he ran it up Temple, that's when they did score. But Schreffler draws a foul from Alan Seleskine, and he'll go to the free throw line as Eric Knox is preparing to come back in the lineup for Ralph Miller's Oregon State team. That's why Celestine is in the game, though. He's fresh, and he commit his, can commit as many fouls as he pleases to stop that clock. Oregon State needs to keep the clock stopped so they can prolong the length of this game. We told you, Knox back in the lineup for Oregon State, despite the fact that he has four fouls. Freshman Scott Schreffler misses the front end of a one and one. Alabegovich corrals the rebound. Great offensive rebound for Knox. Godfrey fouls him. Knox goes to the line for a pair. And Dan Godfrey, that's his fifth. Eric Knox, you see Peyton with the shake and bake off the glass, but look at Knox. He said, wait a minute, this will not be my last game, nor will it be Ralph Miller's last game. We are going to stay here in Tucson and play into the second round. Jim Cruz has to replace Godfrey, who fouls out with 134 to go, and Ralph Miller now will watch Eric Knox head back to the free throw line, where he's two for two in this ball game. Godfrey leaves, 19 points in the ball game. And six rebounds. It'll be a big loss. He will be a big loss, and surprisingly, Jim Cruz comes back with Chris Mack, who's six five. So they're going to go to a smaller lineup, and they're going to take their chances with the smaller lineup. But perhaps Cruz and his staff want to see a better lineup of ball handlers and foul shooters. Huh? That could be the case. Eric Knox misses. He has 11 points in the ball game and 10 rebounds. Knox only 6 2. That one was weak. But it fell, and Ralph Miller sees the timeout called as his team has closed the gap. Pete, this is the kind of game that people dream about. Two points on a difference, a minute 34 to go. Now let's see if he's going to take it all the way or pull it out. Chris Mack there pulls it out. And the freshman looks for somebody and finally finds Brian Hill. You know, Oregon State needs to put the defensive pressure. Go for the steal or commit the foul. But remember now, Alapegovich, Peyton, Knox all have four fouls on them. Treffler, the freshman, way outside, guarded by Brantley. After a fifth year senior, he started his career at the University of Illinois. They're going to let the clock keep going down. Oregon State needs to make a move defensively. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Hafner is trapped. Five on the shot clock. Reed Crafton off the board. Rebound Eric Knox, his 11th rebound of the contest. He's only 6 foot 2. Now you look at it, looking at a two point game. And a timeout called by Oregon State with 39 seconds to go in the contest. But now we're looking at 78 76. Three second differential between the game clock at 39 and the shot clock, which is at 33 now. The clock keeps going down. Gary Payton has 27 points and eight assists. Brantley. <laughs> 19 seconds on the shot clock, 21 seconds on the game clock. Oregon State trails by two. They have the ball against a tenacious Evansville defense. Gary Payton, the junior, bumped as he misses. He's going to the free throw line with a chance to tie the contest. Did you know that Gary Payton would be the man with the rock and the ball in his hand when he came that time? Payton that time knew he had a matchup. He's going to take the ball. He's got Schreffler. He's going to take him to the hoop, through the legs, watch him come in, draw the foul with the body, get the shot up in the air so he can go to the line to shoot two. And now you're looking at 78-76. He needs both of them to tie. Ralph Miller's star, Peyton, 5 for 5 now, 6 for 6 from the free throw line. He has 28 points, and his teammates are watching Oregon State's all-time assist leader. He hits a pair under pressure and ties the game for the eighth time. Evansville calls timeout with 11 seconds to play to set up their last opportunity. Evansville has hit a dry spell, and now they're clinging to a hope of pulling this one out with 11 seconds to play. They have to go the full 94 feet. 
And as you see, Oregon State is prepared to press all over the floor. Hafner to put the ball in play. And he gets it in to Mack, the freshman, right back to Hafner. He's a great free throw shooter. It won't count for an overtime. For the second time in three games, Evansville is involved in an overtime game. They beat Dayton in overtime, 84-79, in the first game of the MCC tournament. This is Oregon State's first overtime game of the year, and the Beavers take the overtime tip, and then Scott Schreffler taps the pass out of bounds. Oregon State will maintain possession of the basketball four seconds into the extra period. You see their overtime records this year. Both are 1-0, so that doesn't tell us anything for today because somebody's going to be 1-1. One one. Bradley working on Hatton. Knox on Crafton. Alabegovic working on Block. Peyton forgot to dribble, didn't he? Alabegovic scores and he's fouled. His first field goal of the contest gives Oregon State the lead and Block commits a foul. And the pass came from the man, Gary Payton. You see Alabegovic there struggling. Payton almost gets the charge, but here he's going to find Alabegovic going to the basket, shooting it, made it. Now he's going to the line for one more. And he's two for two from the line so far. And he gives Oregon State a three-point advantage. And you see the Beavers slap on their full court press. Now the press is not designed just for the steal, rather just for the pressure. Block to Schreffler. Ace is showing some patience. That's Hafner for three. We're tied again. Fifth three-pointer for Scott Hafner. Evansville, nine for 20 from three-point range. Bradley. Oregon State back on top. Brantley has 17. Evansville needs to pull the ball back out. They're basically a motion type team, like to run the passing game. Need to get into their offense to see what's going on. Scott Schreffler. Brian Hill went high to grab the rebound. He had excellent position, and he was fouled. He'll head for the line in a one-and-one -one situation. Old Mike is on his back. That's the fourth foul on Martin. He becomes the fourth Oregon State Beaver to commit four fouls. Ralph Miller hoping this game is not his last, and Brian Hill on the line where he is five for seven. Hill has now reached his career high. He has 20 points. He had an excellent first half, got to a little foul trouble early in the second half. Now he seems to be coming back to play. They're going to need him on the glass because Godfrey, the big fellow that was all MCC, is sitting down watching this one because he's fouled out of the game with five fouls. Two pressure free throws for Brian Hill. And the game is tied again. 83-83, that's the 10th time the contest has been tied. You see the time remaining in overtime. Gary Payton. Brantley thought about it. Watch Payton keep the ball in his hands. Treffler should keep the ball away from him now since he's on the other side of the floor. So he should overplay him. He wasn't overplay. able to there. No, and see, now he's going to, as they say, he'll pay the price because now he's found an open man. Alabegovic for, for three. Part of taking a good shot is being set up by a teammate to get that good shot. And that's what Gary Payton does well. So Evansville has the ball trailing by three. And we're almost halfway through the extra session. Crafting has the ball tipped away. And now stolen. Martin ahead to Brantley. Almost re-stolen by Schreffler, but Oregon State will keep it with 235 to go in the overtime. Oregon State had a four-on-one, and the freshman Schreffler broke it up. Jim Cruz has to be happy with that defensive play because that could have taken a game, which is a three-point margin, up to five, 
with less than three minutes to play, it makes an entirely different ball game. Payton has his pass blocked by Hill, recovered by Schreffler. Wide open is Reed Crafton for three. That's his second three-pointer. He has 10 in the ball game, and the contest is tied again. Evansville now 10 for 21 from three-point range, so they're not blinking in the pressure of an overtime. Continue to shoot the ball well. Alabegovich gets his own rebound and puts it in. Now that's a mismatch in favor of Oregon State because Blob does not want to go outside and guard Alabegovich. And Alabegovich is really a three-man forced to play the center position for Oregon State. So Evansville has the ball trailing by two. Schreffler dribbles it off his foot, dribbles it out of bounds, and Oregon State will take over. Now with a minute 40. Oregon State has built a slender lead in overtime. And the Beavers have the ball. Less than a minute and a half to play in the extra session. Gary Payton has been a big reason why. Alabegovich, a big factor in overtime with eight points. Alabegovich has been able to take advantage of the mismatch that he has with Blob guarding him. Evansville's ball as Scheffler steps in and forces the turnover. So the Aces could tie with a conventional field goal here as Ralph Miller looks on, trying to stall retirement. His next loss, his last game. Minute 15 left in the, in the first overtime. Hafner. And there is the man from the MCC, Scott Hafner. Average 24 and a half points per game. Can fill it up like a supreme man. Six three-pointers today, two here in the pressure of the overtime. That was a reach by a point, and Gary Payton has to scramble to get the ball back. Payton fouled by Crafton and the ball, or by Hafner rather, and the ball drops. Big play by a big player. Payton strives on competition. He wants the ball when the game is on the line. He, put, he made the two free throws to put him into OT. Now watch him. He, at this point, he knows, I'm going up. I'm making it. I don't care if you hit me on the arm. Nice soft shot, and it goes in. He's here from the floor angle, from the behind. Here he goes. Oh, there's the foul. He puts it in the vicinity. With well, a soft shot like that as a shooter, you just want to get it in the vicinity of the basket. But being soft, it'll take care of itself. But he Hill. didn't convert the free throw. Hill gets the rebound off the missed free throw. Evansville trails by a point, but they have the ball, and you see the time remaining in overtime. Do you play for one here? Well, the shot clock says 35, so it's about two seconds under the game clock. You have to play for the last shot. Take it down as long as possible because you don't want Oregon State to be able to come back down and shoot the last one. Crafton guided by Brantley. Hafner guided by Peyton. That's a terrific goal. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Big one. Reed Crafton. Big league three-pointer. Timeout on the floor, Reed Crafton delivers a three-pointer to give Evansville a two-point advantage with eight seconds remaining in the extra session. Reed Crafton has just delivered a three-pointer to give Evansville the two-point lead they now enjoy, and the Beavers will have to go the full 94 feet against full court pressure from the Purple Aces. Ball comes in to Brantley. There's Peyton with the ball. And He's he fires go for from three and misses. And there's a foul on the rebound. Two seconds on the clock. The foul is on Oregon State. And it's going to be Gary Payton, Gary Payton over the in. back. And that's Lamont McIntosh. <laughs> Gary Payton. And there's Ralph Miller. He may be two seconds away from an illustrious head coaching career, the end of an illustrious head coaching career. You can see how the Oregon State players and fans feel. They know that they're a second away. Even the yep, Evansville yep. fans have great respect for Ralph Miller. Emotion. Look at this. This poor lady here can't handle him. Gary Payton fouls out of the contest. Alan Celestine returns to replace him. Schreffler, if he can make the first and the second, it's over. If not, you never know. A 
Clutch free throw for the freshman. He now has 12 points in the ball game. He's one for two from the free throw line, and he's given his team a three-point advantage. Two big ones. Evansville has eliminated.